Hi, everybody. Um, it is uh, five o'clock. We will get started. I'm sure there will be some folks who will join us. We've only got 12 so far, but I've heard from quite a few people that they could not um, make it this evening. So we will record this and get it um, get it up online. Uh, we do have, looks like quite a few additional people joining. Um, but welcome everybody. And um, we'll have a, a quick, um, quick round here and watching as people join. For those of you um, who are with Cherry Creek North, I see Linda here. Um, and Amy presented last night as she did to the steering committee last month, but I will give her a quick update. She, uh, she did confirm last evening that she and her team have now filed. So that's a, a quick update and we congratulate her on getting that step done. <laughs> okay, we've uh, got 15 Thank people. You. We're, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and uh, and get started. Uh, you did a great job last night, Amy. I'm sure Linda would agree. Uh, there were, I don't know, Linda, if you know how many people were in attendance last night, but I think we had 58 online. We had about, I think almost 70 in person. So it was uh, a good turnout. We feel really, really lucky that when we have our uh, quarterly meetings with the entire neighborhood. We always have over a hundred people in attendance and uh, there's Annette. Um, she was there last night. And so we are, we were really thankful that we had a really great turnout and very appreciative of uh, the presentation and all the help that everyone provided. So for tonight's meeting, uh, I don't see anybody here with any of the other uh, council folks offices. And since um, Owen will be, I, I take it, Owen, that you'll be presenting tonight instead of Councilwoman Sawyer? Yeah, I think she said she's going to hop on. She just might be a little bit late. I think her daughter had a game. So I think she, okay. she should be here probably in 10 or 15 minutes, I'd say. Perfect. Because I know this group will be really fascinated for the presentation uh, that will be given tonight on the results of that study. So... Um, why don't we save Owen, since he will be uh, really running the show, and Councilwoman if she joins us, and we will go to the updates from the bid. And Richard is here. Richard, thank you for being here. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having us. <laughs> um, not a whole lot of updates. This is probably for this group, um, really talking through our things to do. So we have our um, signature events for the summer posted now. So we have a uh, concert series coming off. That's going to be June 1st, 15th, and 29th from 2 to 8 on Fillmore. So we invite everybody down to come to that concert series. Um, event schedule will start at 2 o'clock and we'll run through 8 o'clock with uh, some smaller groups leading up to a headliner for each weekend. Um, so we're excited about that event coming up. We also have the uh, Smash Fine Arts Festival. And I'm sorry, my internet is slow. I'm trying to pull up the schedule here. Um, we have Smash Fine Arts Festival Saturday, June 8th, and Sunday, June 9th on Fillmore. Uh, come down and enjoy that show. It's been with us for four, four years now, I believe. Um, Cherry Creek Arts Festival. Of course, that's going to be uh, Friday, June 5th through July, or July 5th through July 7th. We're just working out some final permitting details with them. Um, there's going to be construction starting down at 2nd and Adams, so that job site will go active. Um, we expect that closure to come in the next week for the sidewalk being closed and for the contractor to start. So that permit has been issued. So that's going to affect the layout of the festival um, just outside our boundaries. But I um, thought the neighborhood would want to know that one. Um, we have the Steel Day, the French Festival on July 12th um, through Sunday, July 14th. Um, that'll be a new event for us. We're really excited about that, partnering with the French Chamber. Um, we have our sidewalk sale Thursday, July 18th through Sunday, July 21st. Uh, 5280 is back with Top of the Town on July 18th. That will be in place for the Cherry Creek Food and Wine event. And then kind of capping out the summer with another Smash Fine Arts Festival on August 10th through August 11th. Um, then more events to come after that. We just haven't released that calendar yet as we're dialing in some dates. Um, other than that, you've probably noticed that the old Bad Daddy's building is down. Um, that job site will get cleaned up. That fence will be pulled in. The sidewalk will be opened. Um, they'll probably restart that project sometime in the fourth quarter. 
Um, so that's that's kind of it. What's going on in the district? I mean, we're working on a lot of landscaping projects right now. You might have all seen that giant mulch bed near the new building on Third and Fillmore. We're going to get that corrected and make sure there's turf there. There was turf there before, and it'll be back because we don't want just giant beds of mulch in the district. Um, so rest assured that we're looking at all those details, and we will make sure that everything's good for the neighborhood. Richard, quick question. Um, one of the things that came up last night at the meeting for Cherry Creek North was the, the question about the, the parking. Um, it, let me back up for everybody's benefit. When a developer pulls their permits, they are supposed to also now put in place a parking um, plan for their workers for the project. And I know that I, on the 180 Madison project um, years ago, we it took a long time for me to find that. So I'm wondering, do they file those with the district? We file them with the city. We typically get a copy of them from the city or a copy from the contractor. I'd say the, the contractor building in the bid right now, we really leaned on that and we've used our public safety team to really push that because we saw a lot of construction parking. Of course, we're, I'm just looking within the bid boundaries, not necessarily in the residential where we mm -hmm. enforce it. They are all submitting parking plans. We're all required to have offsite parking arranged, um, not to rely on parking on the street. So all their subcontractors are required to follow their plans and park off site or shuttle employees in. And that's what we're seeing a lot of. Um, if you're having issues with it in the neighborhood, reach out, we'll try and track down the project and we can uh, you know, just be the liaison and really lean on those project managers to make sure they're holding people accountable. Well, good. I, I was told um, by a resident who said that there's a guy, all these people park up in the neighborhood um, and then a guy comes with a motorcycle and takes them all down to the job site. <laughs> so I said, well, we just need to know about this and, and we'll work with, um, with the folks in the bid and we'll, we can also find those plans at the city. But if you have copies of them for us, it, it, I know it took me a long time of going into the weeds on a particular project to actually find the parking plan. So um, if we know that you have it and you guys enforce it, that is terrific. And I hope you don't mind if we share that with some of the residents who ask those questions. Absolutely. And I would say, you know, we want to be great stewards of the neighborhood and help, help manage it. So if they're seeing stuff, have them reach out to our public safety team or to myself, and we will address it. We, we've, the city will play heavy on this. They will shut down the project if they are not complying with the plans. Our right away inspector, you know, Delfino Rodriguez has been amazing. We run into issues. He's really quick to uh, hold them accountable and make sure that they're playing by the rules. So that's one area that we just have great support, you know, from the city with, and we're partnered and aligned with it. So uh, they will shut those projects down if they don't comply. So, and, and then that makes them comply really fast. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Time is money. Certainly that would uh, be a motivator. Um, so um, one other question, I think for the bid I know you're moving forward on the Walker uh, study. Yep. Um, any news on the timing of that or where that stands? So right now we um, have another, uh, our group's coming together to kind of go through ideas and thoughts. We've Walker's kind of got some, you know, some good thoughts behind how we can influence different things when it comes to parking. So we have our steering committee for that group getting together, I want to say on the week after next. Um, and that's going to kind of give us that final Kind of look at what we're do, what we're planning on doing, what's achievable, what's not. I think we have some really wild ideas we might not be able to cross the finish line, but then we have some real reasonable ones that we can maybe impact some great change. So we could probably present to that at the next uh, at the next steering committee meeting. Oh, that would be phenomenal. And you know, one of the things that we've always wondered about is to what extent now that especially the new developers are required to do a parking management plan. Can we push for some of this, these shared concepts that you might be coming up with? Okay. Um, so great. We would look forward to that uh, next week. So thank you very, very, very much. Anybody have any questions for Richard? Okay, we will move on. Um, heck, we might even get out of here a little early tonight. <laughs> and we only have 16 people, just so you all know. Uh, uh, we are recording this, so hopefully others will will catch up. So I think we'll move on um, to Councilwoman Sawyer's senior aide, Owen Brigner. Uh, many of you know him. He also saved the day last night and that the uh, screens at Bromwell were, we could you couldn't really see them because the sun was 
was setting at an angle and you couldn't really see anything on the screen. So Owen did his uh, this yeoman job of climbing up on chairs and tables to catch the little um, cord to close the blinds. So this is a full service senior aide for our councilwoman. <laughs> He's terrific. And, and Owen, I am going to make you a... Um, and of course, this, for those of you who didn't uh, have a chance to look at the agenda, um, this is the presentation of the results of the study. Oh, and I see Councilwoman is here. Oh, there she oh, is. Perfect. Hi. That was perfect timing. That was perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. Hello. We were just bragging Hi. on Owen from last night and you and presenting and his great job of opening or closing the blinds. Um, we were going to dive into this, and I made uh, Owen a co-host to share the the results, if you'd like. Would you like to be made a co-host, too? No, Owen can do it. Well, why don't you say a few words to everybody, then, before we get started with him? Yeah, absolutely. First, hi, everyone. I apologize for being late. Today was the Hill Soccer Banquet, so um, the kids versus teachers soccer game ended at five and I like raced home and was like, okay, I'm getting on this call. So I apologize for being late, but here I am. Um, Thank you for being here. Yeah, of course. It's great to see everyone. Um, just to let everyone know, we thank you. You guys did a fantastic job of spreading the word about um, the survey, which we're so grateful for. Um, we had well over, uh, you know, the responses that we needed to be statistically significant. Um, we got really good data um, from the residents about where you see gaps in um, in the Cherry Creek statistical neighborhood. So that includes Cherry Creek uh, East, Cherry Creek North, and the bid area um, for now. And we'll maybe one day include the Cherry Creek West development as well. Um, but it was really, really helpful for us to kind of see where residents feel like there are gaps in the community. Um, we know that... Um, you all feel, and deservedly so, like the city does not reinvest enough in this community, given the amount of tax dollars that come from this community. Um, and actually I sent a very interesting graphic today. Um, you know, usually we say Cherry Creek is the, is the, other than the airport, Cherry Creek is the third, is the second largest revenue generating source for the city of Denver. That is untrue for 2023. The airport uh, revenue was less than Cherry Creek. So um, other than downtown, um, we are the number one revenue generating area um, for the city and county of Denver. And the lack of reinvestment in our community that we see is totally unacceptable. So um, I really appreciate everyone providing us um, your feedback. Um, it's been very helpful and I think um, help us to identify um, what residents want more of um, and where there are gaps in services and where things are really positive. Um, so I'm going to let Owen go ahead and go through the survey results with you all, and then we'll talk about it and answer questions. I'd like to take a pause before we get too much into that and welcome uh, Sterling Sims, who is uh, with the mayor's office. And now that I see you, would you please take a moment to introduce yourself to the steering committee? We are thrilled that you are here and would love to see you every month. Well, you can certainly count on that, Lou. Thank you so much for uh, letting me join you all tonight. Um, for those of you who may not have known me before, uh, my name is Sterling Sims. I'm the operations coordinator for the mayor's outreach team. I'm also now serving as the senior uh, outreach manager for districts two, four, five, and six. So you guys will see me a lot in the community, but really happy to be here and uh, thank you all so much. And then Great. we'll say... Sterling himself painted the bus stop on the corner of third in Colorado this weekend and did an amazing job. So shout out. Mm -hmm. it looks great. Happy to do it. Can't wait for the next one. And I think uh, Owen is going to start with that. Maybe a recap on how that went. Is that right, Owen? Sure. I can do whichever. We can start. Yeah, why don't you start with that? Because there's a great segue that uh, Councilwoman and Sterling just uh, brought up. So Tell, tell everybody what it was and how it went. Perfect. So on Sunday, just a few days ago, we had our inaugural transit touch-up day. I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, and the point of that was to um, 
uh, was to kind of fill the gap on when it comes to bus stops. So Dottie is responsible for maintaining bus stops in Denver. We all know that they don't. The bus stops look pretty unsightly. Um, and so Councilman Sawyer had me go through and find all the bus stops in District 5 and then kind of put together a plan on how we can uh, improve that experience and kind of beautify the neighborhood. So there are 223 bus stops in District 5. 106 of them are just the uh, standalone signs here. 31 of them are the shelters. Um, and then 23 bus stops are either brown, which those are in Windsor Gardens, or they're gray, which uh, there are some in Cherry Creek and in Lowry. Uh, and so we're not, we obviously can't paint a sign. Uh, we're worried about, you know, getting on a ladder and painting the top of a shelter. So we're not going to do those. Um, and then because of the unique color and material of those 23 in the other three neighborhoods, we didn't paint those. So there's, that leaves us with 63 bus stop benches in District 5 that we can paint. Uh, and so on Sunday, we did 15 of them. Um, and like I said, we want residents to feel good about where they live and feel safe uh, when they're traveling. We know that if you, you know, feel good about the area that you're in, then you're going to feel safer and you're going to feel better about um, the place that you are. Uh, and so we had 27 volunteers on Sunday. We cleaned 15 benches and we're going to have our next event in the fall because it was so successful. And then, of course, Councilwoman Sawyer and I are right there cleaning one of the benches. That's the one at Monaco and Sixth. And then I've got a couple before and after pictures. This is the one Sterling did, which is awesome. Woo, woo. <laughs> and then 11th in Colorado. And then this is the one right in front of 50 South Colorado. And Lower in Yosemite. So yeah, it's a pretty awesome event. Yes. Yeah, it was really fantastic. Um, and so it was very interesting. We did it on a separate day from Parks Cleanup Day, which unfortunately did not get to happen because it snowed both weekends that we had scheduled Parks Cleanup Day this year. Um, but we did it on a separate weekend because we wanted to see whether there was going to be overlap in the, the people who were volunteering for um, both events. And there was only one um, resident overlap between the two different events. So I think what we're going to do in the fall is instead of doing parks cleanup day, we're going to do community cleanup day. Um, and our sign up will include parks and it will include bus stops. And then we're sort of, um, would love your feedback on if there are any other sorts of things in the community that we might be able to, um, add to community cleanup day in terms of, um, you know, relatively straightforward, um, a, a volunteer could do it with a simple sheet of directions um, that uh, that would make a difference in our community. As you guys know, I feel very strongly that placemaking matters and that the look and feel of a location directly relates to how someone experiences that location and how they feel about it, whether they feel safe, whether they feel welcome, um, all of those different things. So that's what we, that's what we are always trying to do. Um, with our parks cleanup day and with transit touch up day. And um, so I think we'll combine them in the fall. Uh, save the, your date, save the date on your calendars. So I believe we're sort of, we've held two dates right now. We're not sure which one it will be. Um, the first one is September, Sunday, Sunday September 29th. Um, and the second date is Sunday, October 6th. So it will be one of those days. Um, we're not sure which yet, cause that's, you know, six months down the road and we need a second to get organized from, from this week's adventure. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll be doing it again, uh, on that weekend and we hope you guys can join us and help spread the word. Great, great job. Oh, and you want to go ahead and, uh, talk through some of the results of the Cherry Creek survey, resident survey. Yes. <laughs> And we're happy to email this to you. It was in our newsletter last week. Um, we handed out copies of it at the uh, community, the uh, CCNNA meeting last night. Um, and so just as a little bit of background before Owen gets started, we put together um, a, a survey. Um, it, we uh, used a, a consultant to do it so that it was neutral third party. Um, we did the outreach for it, uh, and you guys showed up in droves. So fantastic job. Um, and oh, and I think if you make it a little bit bigger, you'll have to kind of go scroll through a little bit more. But yeah, it might be easier to kind of see. All right, take it away, Owen. This is your project, and you did a great job on it. Thanks. Uh, like Councilwoman Sawyer said, we had 1,027 responses, which is just incredible. Uh, the survey was open for a little bit, uh, about two months. 
Um, and really four takeaways, um, expanded patrol of security services uh, in addition to Denver Police Department activity, and then additional lighting, uh, traffic calming improvements, and kind of easing that traffic congestion, uh, and then improvements to the Greenway down by the Cherry Creek Trail. So um, there were about six or seven sections. This first one, big picture ind indicators, really just trying to get a feel for how people um, feel about their neighborhood in Cherry Creek. Overall, pretty positive. Uh, when it comes to quality of government services, like through and one investment from the city, uh, and then of course, traffic and travel uh, and congestion, that's where the indicators really started to fall off here. Uh, and this is really a theme throughout the whole thing. Um, of course, we mentioned traffic and parking, construction, and then being unsafe for pedestrians crossing the street. And then safety indicators. Most people feel safe in a park or playground during the day. Most people feel safe biking through the neighborhood. Eh, on feeling safe walking at home at night, uh, starting to kind of really decrease here, feeling safe crossing the street again. And then a lot of people talked about not feeling safe when they're interacting with the scooter. And I will say that we reached out to the Denver Police Department to get data from them on uh, crash data when it comes to interactions with scooters. And since 2021, there's been one crash in Cherry Creek, that's whole statistical neighborhood, including Cherry Creek East with a scooter, um, with the caveat that most people don't report uh, an in, uh, a crash with a scooter because the injuries are usually so minor. So I um, want to throw that out there. Uh, and then the same thing here, request for more police patrolling, better bike infrastructure, speeding cars, feels like a freeway, too many drivers running stop signs, uh, and then again, scooters being a problem. And then the third section here, non-safety indicators. So most people felt like the neighborhood is pretty clean. Um, most people feel good about the quality of parks and playgrounds in Cherry Creek. People feel good about the tree canopy and then start to fall off here with the air quality, control of street noise, and then traffic. And then some of the comments, people were asked to provide comments to support their ranking. Uh, and then again, a lot of cars, construction, um, and then drag racing, motorcycles, and then, uh, you know, noise related to leaf blowing and things like that. And then the fourth section here went into quality of services. So uh, police response, pickup from for garbage, 311. Um, most people commented that the, the bid uh, is doing a great job. Landscaping on First Avenue needs to be improved right there in the medians. Um, and then Again, parking, parking fees, homelessness, not receiving a response from 311, lack of frequent public transportation and uh, coming to Cherry Creek, and then um, a request here for enforcing snow shoveling. And Owen, um, I just am going to stop you here for a minute. I know Richard is usually on this call and um, because your screen is shared, I'm not sure if he is or not. But Richard, um, I know since we just talked about the medians on Cherry Creek, um, on first along Cherry Creek. Do you want to talk quickly about that? I know most people on this call um, are updated on that, but I, I doubt that Sterling is as he kind of gets his feet underneath him. So it might be great to just reiterate what's going on there. Yeah, absolutely. So the median on first, and then also we call the Triangle Park median between first and second at University and Josephine. We've taken those over to do maintenance on them. So we have an IGA now with the city to maintain those areas. So we started mowing, trimming things down, and looking at maintenance. We're going to be evaluating the conditions and um, really trying to find maybe a partnership, maybe possibly reaching out to the Botanic Gardens or somebody else to take a look at how we can plan that area and what we can do better out there. Um, we know the conditions and, and what was put out there. We'd probably make different decisions in this day and age, what material we're putting out in a traffic media. We don't want people out mowing in traffic and having too much care out there. So we have to be real thoughtful on what we're going to do in these two spaces. We think we have great opportunity and really more to come as we as we path that forward. But we are maintaining them now. So things will be trimmed and picked up and uh, we'll make sure that everything's looking as sharp as it can until we figure out what that investment will look like and how we can partner with community community members to really invest in that space. Awesome. Thank you. Really great. appreciate that update. You're welcome. Uh, and then here we've got some listings and rankings of some of the um, services here. So we've got electric vehicle charging stations, police response, 
uh, all the things here. And it really starts to fall off once you come down here to homelessness response, maintenance of sidewalks, snow removal, and then parking enforcement. And so then this section talks more about needed improvements. So 71% of respondents said that traffic, that the city could do more when it comes to dealing with traffic and congestion. 54% uh, wanted to do more with pedestrian safety. 48% wanted the city to do more in improving that uh, nighttime walking. 39% uh, again, sidewalks, and then 37% uh, dissatisfied with the homelessness response. And then here, this last section, uh, is desired improvement beyond proposed public investment. So this would be, um, you know, if an additional dedicated funding stream were to be uh, dedicated to Cherry Creek specifically, and these top five are what people responded. So they wanted improved lighting in residential areas, uh, wanted additional security outside of just the Denver Police Department, uh, wanted enhanced street crossings, wanted greenway improvements down by the Cherry Creek Trail, and then wanted microtransit. And then down here, there's a couple extra ones that were also put on there that are interesting. Landscaping, more public art, uh, uh, kind of goes in with the Greenway improvements, additional creek pedestrian bridge uh, to get across the, the, the creek there, more bike paths, and then uh, some white wayfinding and e-bike library for additional microtransit options, and then branded bus stops. Uh, and then a couple other things, so some more free parking uh, a dog park and dog waste stations, and then some more traffic calming and street calming measures. And before you move on, Owen, I would just um, just really briefly want to mention, based on these survey um, results, one of the requests that we as count so during budget season, council member has council members have a couple of different options for places where we can make budget requests um, for specific projects. So the first one, and, and remember, there's a difference between council as a body and council members as human beings, right? So um, council as a body gets together. We did it a couple of weeks ago. Um, you might have seen our priorities on our social media, on my social media page, but uh, we came up with between the 13 of us, eight different priorities um, and then talked through specific programs that we would like to see funded that relate to those priorities. Those get put in a letter and they get sent to the mayor's office. I believe that is happening late sometime this week. Um, so that is kind of how council as a body makes budget requests um, to the mayor's office. And, and then in September, we see the budget and see um, whether those requests have been fulfilled and can kind of um, move budget dollars around via amendments and another series of letters with the mayor's office, lots and lots of letters. Um, and and then that is kind of how the sausage gets made. And then there's a final vote, vote on the budget in November. Um, for council members as individuals, we have an opportunity, we have two opportunities to make requests. The first is every year, we get an opportunity to make what are called micro budget requests. And micro budget requests are requests from me about my district. And so um, I mentioned this here because dog park and way stations um, is on this list. And that is kind of one of the things that we had talked about um, doing. And it is one of the budget. Um, Owen, did we do it as uh, I think we did it as a micro budget request. The other option um, would be to do it as a bond project. And usually the and so council members have an opportunity to create a list every time we're talking about a potential bond project or a potential bond going out to the voters. Um, we do that every 10 years about. Um, we did it in 2017. Those were the Elevate Denver bonds. We did it in 2021 uh, or late 2020. I can't remember which one. Um, that was the rise Denver bonds. And we did that second in intermediate bond step um, because of COVID, because we know that bond projects and construction projects um, are a great way to ensure that people have jobs, people have steady incomes. Um, and then of course they reinvest that into our community. And we've seen that be very successful. Um, the city also did it in 2009 after the 2008 um, market crash. Um, and so, and we know that it has been successful again, right? So we know um, that Denver has sort of 
recovered from COVID better than other cities across the country, not perfectly, um, but we our economy has, has recovered um, much more steadily than other cities across the country. And part of that is because of those bond projects that are ongoing. Uh, the mayor's office has, um, I believe, made the decision that they are going to have all bond projects from both Elevate Denver and Rise Denver done by the end of 2026. Um, and so that would mean that then we will be having a conversation about future bonds, um, you know, projects that could be uh, approved by the voters as a, as a bond package um, sometime kind of coming up in the next few years. So we also have an opportunity to make bond requests. The difference between micro budget requests and bond requests are that micro budget requests are immediate, right? This is this is for the 2025 budget. Put seventy five thousand dollars towards traffic calming measures in uh, in certain areas, or or whatever the case might be. Bond requests are much larger, so bond requests might be um, dedicate two point five million dollars to renovating the um, Lindsley Park tennis courts and playground. Right. So um, that's kind of the difference between the two. But those are the places where council members as individuals have an opportunity to advocate for projects in the district. Um, so uh, one of the micro budget requests that we made this year was for a dog park, an enclosed dog park to be added at Pulaski Park for the very reason that it is attached. It was one of the items that we saw um, a lot of comments on in this survey. So that was a very long explanation. I'm happy to answer questions about that, um, but wanted to flag that for you while we're kind of talking about this, just so that you're aware that um, we do stuff with the information that you provide us. Um, so I, Owen, go ahead now. <laughs> yeah, uh, and to that point about doing stuff with the information that you all provide, right now we're going through and tying all of this information right here to like adopted plans from Blueprint Denver and the Cherry Creek area plan. and all the other plans um, to kind of figure out what our next steps will be with this information. So this last and final part from the needs assessment survey that you all took is the respondent profile. Um, really just um, pretty interesting here. Uh, a lot of people, most people were residents of Cherry Creek, some people were workers, uh, and then like residents of Country Club, Hilltop and Belcaro uh, took the survey also. And then there were a couple investors that took the survey. And then resident-wise, the majority of the people that took the survey live in Cherry Creek North, 7% uh, uh, are within the bid, and then 28% are in Cherry Creek East. I think that is oh, we've got here. So uh, years of relationship with Cherry Creek. So some people, 60% of people had more than 10 years, 14% had 6 to 10 years, 24% had 1 to 5 years, uh, and then 2% were less than 1 year. Uh, and then the age is interesting also, 65 years or more, less than 25 years old, 25 to 44, and then 45 to 64. So I think that's the end of this. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, the question is what comes next, right? So we've got the results of the survey. Um, what do we do with them? I've already talked a little bit about um, what we're doing with them. And Owen mentioned sort of the biggest thing at this time that we want to do is now that we've heard from residents, um, we want to look at the city plans that exist already that were created via resident feedback um, over time, kind of over the last 10 years or so. Um, to look at what kinds of um, recommendations were written into those plans and um, see if we can kind of match up some of the feedback that we're hearing from residents with some of those recommendations in those plans. Um, so the city has a very bad habit of creating lots of plans and not implementing them. So I suspect that we will find that there are a number of things um, that were identified in plans from 10 years ago um, that have never been done. And then they came back up again in our survey as results of the survey. Um, but Owen's not done with that work yet. So I don't want to, I don't want to um, speak out of turn, but we would be happy to come back and present um, on that to you once we kind of get it done um, and then kind of have a conversation about what comes next. Um, I will say, um, you know, based on the city's kind of equity guidelines, it's very unlikely that we will see a lot of investment in Cherry Creek um, because we just don't simply don't qualify 
um, for any of the equity analysis pieces that um, the city looks at when it comes to kind of doling out limited tax dollars for projects. Um, with that said, I do think the city is wrong in several um, important ways, including the fact that we have um, several developments that are coming right now that have um, that were filed after the expanding housing affordability legislation, which means they are required to build in affordable deed restricted affordable units. So, um, and the purpose of that and why it's good for Cherry Creek is because. Um, those are our staff members, right? We know that our businesses are having a really tough time keeping staff. Um, just as an example, like the Hotel Clio, it's not only the restaurant, um, but also the room cleaners, um, you know, valet parkers, et cetera, all of those kinds of, um, of staff members who make the places we love to go run can't afford to live in Cherry Creek. Um, and so this really helps to address that challenge. Um, but I will say um, the city does not consider that need when they are looking at the equity analysis. And so um, the question is, what comes next? I have been very frank with you all since I took over your district. I think we should create a general improvement district um, in Cherry Creek to kind of overlay the entire Cherry Creek statistical neighborhood um, to help address some of these challenges and, and um, fund some of the projects that we want to see done. That is a Tabor question that would have to go to the voters, right? And nobody wants to see more taxes. Everybody hates taxes, and I hear that. But if we are voting on taxes um, that would go directly to projects that we have said we want in our community, that we have been talking about in these plans over the last 10 years, that our community survey has indicated matters, um, then it might be that it would be worthwhile what? to so this is a an oh, early um, drone. Larry, I think we can we can hear you. I there just, you go. I just muted him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so much more kind of conversation to be had on that. I think the next step is really kind of connecting the um Cherry Creek East and uh Cherry Creek North and Cherry Creek uh Greenway plan and some information from the bid and um, Blueprint Denver. And I mean, there's lots of plans um, that touch Cherry Creek. So we need to some time to kind of go through those, take a look at the plan support, and then we'll come back to you and provide kind of our results of what we found from that. And we're happy to do that. So that's not happening today. <laughs> um, so tell me what questions do we have? We're happy to answer any questions you've got. I don't see any hands for questions. Please put uh -huh. your hands if there are any questions. I will add a couple of things because we um, we have some opportunities, I think, right now. Uh, we talked about this a little bit last night, but in the area plan, we've had this concept, and it's in Blueprint too, uh, of gateways. And the gateway concept um, that is an opportunity right now and um, you know, similar to the the bid taking, you know, entering into this IGA for some expanded um, landscaping on the medians, we can start thinking about what we can see now in our future, especially with Cherry Creek West having an opportunity for us to really think about what that gateway looks like. Um, I went to the Cherry Creek Chamber event. Um, and sat at the table with the head of <laughs> Richard Smiley because he surprised me with a community service award um, that was, I was totally shocked. And, uh, but so I- So well-deserved. Well-deserved well award. Congratulations. <laughs> and how well, amazing is it that the business community is giving the awards to somebody that represents the neighborhood? The synergy <laughs> is amazing. And Lou, we love you. <laughs> well, thank you, Richard. Back at you, but- I was I, I was flummoxed. It was one of those times when I'm like, oh my God, thank God I remembered how to put a little makeup on because I had no idea that this was no idea that this was happening. And I, I so appreciate the support from and of course love we love our relationship um with Richard and the folks at the bid and, and the chamber. It's just it's so great to have this steering committee and and uh, the, the common goals that we share and the symbiotic relationship that benefits everyone, of course, really benefits the city. Um, but the um, but the um, the head of now the Botanic Gardens 
was the MC for the day. And he even said, I'd really love to think about Cherry Creek as the garden district. So many opportunities to think about how that can really come to fruition. So we've got this concept of a gateway, and this is not just for the bid or for the residents of Cherry Creek North. It is a steering committee. What does that look like? We know what the country club gateways look like, right? We've got the, you know, this historic district with the planters and the gates and everything else, but what will our gateway look like? It's for a future um, discussion, and we always knew it would be once it was in the area plan, but now we can see it from here, right? And we've got some interest from the gardens. Let's start thinking about it. Let's start really thinking, is this a time when everyone who lives in a, high, in, in a, in a condo at the Laurel can actually come in, dig their hands in some dirt and plant some flowers throughout the neighborhood? Can we really think about some, some uh, pedestrian lighting throughout the area with some garden uh, elements throughout the residential because it's already in the bid are these things that thinking about jids and then thinking about our gateways are those gateways um places where we will have re revolving sculptures art plantings um you know annette who's here um is a world-class artist trained on all things um i think just the botanical but she's just amazing with this but she knows the gardens well because she took a lot of classes there. We have so many people, and she's a master gardener, who can really make um, a difference and have a say. And so we can start thinking about it now. Meredith. I, um, for Sterling, again, thank you. Um, but I also want to um, remind people of um, how not only is there, there is a lot, there is some affordable housing here in, in Cherry Creek. I mean, Kavad has 400 units plus, but also we always talk about how we have people who work in this neighborhood who are, you know, service sector workers, and there are a lot of them. And I understand you know, I, I office in, in the coal neighborhood. It's very different demographic, but it's not just the people who live in, in Cherry Creek. It's also the workers who live in Cherry Creek. And there needs to be some of the investments in Cherry Creek that help those workers. And, um, you know, the um, Stuart always is so articulate talking about that. And so I hope we don't forget and just think, everything is, you know, what you think of um, as Cherry Creek. Lou and I worked years ago trying to get some bond money just to make the crossing safer for residents. And, um, you know, people kind of rolled their eyes when they heard Cherry Creek. But again, you know, Kavad has 400 units of housing um, quality. Yes. Low income and some housing. of that is very low income. It's not what we're talking about that it, that uh, Cherry Creek uh, West will be building in. I mean, this is true sir, low income supported housing. And it's a really good point. 30% really sliding scale. Yeah. We have, um, we have raised those are really good points, Meredith. Thank you for bringing them up. Uh, you're preaching to the choir when um, when Richard and I served on uh, the Denver Moves Cherry Creek. We talked about that a lot because transit is one of the biggest issues for workers who are coming from other areas of the city uh, because they don't live here and they have families and they drive, drive, drive. They don't have places to park that are affordable and they don't have bus service. And so... Um, it's a real issue. It's a real issue for the businesses and it's a real issue of equity for us. And But that is a mantra uh, that we continue to uh, reiterate um, both in Denver Moves, in our um, transportation solutions uh, board is very sensitive to that. And, um, you know, Amanda and, and Richard and, and others are on that board with me. And uh, it is a common 
uh, issue for us, but it is a perception question. And, um, but we need to take that up while we are also tending to the basics. And our basics are the kinds of things that I think were highlighted in the survey where people, uh, I know two people who have tripped on bad sidewalks and broken wrists and things like that. And it is extremely dark uh, walking home from the restaurants at night. And um, and then you combine bad sidewalks with dark streets and you have an issue. We don't want big street lights. Pedestrian lighting, which Cherry Creek East is fortunate because I remember live, when I lived in Cherry Creek East and served on that board, we had a standard for pedestrian lighting that was allowed and is beautiful and very effective, although it's not consistent. So there are lots of things that we can do, and there are some things that we can do now, and there are some things we can start thinking about now, but it is going to be a process. I think there was in the, uh, I think Bill raised the question of what can we do about the JID. So you don't go out with the, the and, and um, Councilwoman Sawyer has put out, uh, she's got a group of us that get together and we talk about this JID concept and we focus on what that means. And, and our board and Cherry Creek North has also spoken about it. And when we just had an increase in taxes that people have reacted negatively to, um, it, it, we thought, you know, it's, it may not be the time, although talking about the issues and understanding issues, you don't roll out a JID without having specific projects. And so people need to know that if they're interested in paying a little more, this is what they're gonna get. That's how those work. But it's a long process. And uh, I, uh, Councilman Sawyer has been amazing about thinking about it and looking into the future. And so it should still be on the radar. Is it time to start marketing it, Bill? Not at all, right? Not at all. It's the time for these questions. It's the time for thinking about where revenue sources are and, um, and, and addressing citizens' needs, or we're not gonna get it. I mean, right now, what we heard last night for Cherry Creek North and um, Sterling, I'll be reaching out to you on this one. We have a huge issue with a proposed change to the uh, permitted parking. Annette and I have worked on that subcommittee to have a, um, a dialogue, questions about how, what they were proposing, would they make these changes, would they consider that? Councilwoman Sawyer got involved, we had a follow-up, we talked about could there be some, some common ground where we could um, satisfy the residents. The residents are up in arms about it. And I, and I think that you know, this isn't a council issue, it's a Dottie issue. So uh, we have, uh, with the help of uh, Amanda and Owen and their great staff, and you know, we put out a survey to the residents, not a survey, a petition to the residents that they will sign on to get this stopped right now until we can figure out something that's gonna work. Because uh, the people who have lived here for a long, long time and who have, approved the area plan, the new zoning. So the new zoning was in 2010, the area plan in 2012, oh. the, the, the CCN zoning in, in 2014. We've worked on all these with the understanding that what was initiated under Councilwoman Jeannie Robbs, and of course, I, I don't know if you know her, Sterling, but she still lives in the in the country club area. But what what happened is when the parking uh, in the bid became paid parking, everyone parked in the neighborhood and there was an uproar and we got this permit system. So as all this developed, it would be okay for increased density so long as we had our parking permits. And now that system is being decimated. Um, and this idea of an area-wide permit where everyone is just going to park, where are they going to park? They're going to park in now the second largest tax base for the city, close to where they can go down and have lunch. And all of the 300 block, 400 block streets are going to be taken up. And um, and 
fortunately, and you know, it'll spread from there, but those will be the most negatively impacted. But the residents are really upset that we can't get anybody to understand. And when they say, well, it's just Cherry Creek, you gotta share your parking. He said, well, wait a minute, we're Cherry Creek. We're the ones that are living through all this. We approved all this higher density. We've invested in this neighborhood. We love this neighborhood. And we did this with the understanding that we would still be able to have a plumber come to our house. Because frankly, you know, we were told, I sent this little picture of a notice from the our tree company that we hired to come and take care of our trees. And they said, sorry, we can't service your house. There's no parking in your area. So, I mean, we got them to come back, but that day when we had planned to, you know, get the dogs in and have them available to, to, to go up and do the, they said, sorry, there's no place to park on the street or the next street. So this is real life impact. But I think for the people sitting there looking at the maps, they don't see it, but they need to listen to the people who see it every day. And um, with the um, terrific work that we've done with the bid, um, you, you, we've just, we've got to pick up some of these issues that are quality of life. Richard. Yeah, I just want to just second what Lou's saying and make sure Sterling, you hear from the business community here. You know, it's a very balanced relationship with the neighbors and we really appreciate each other and that the synergy we're so proud of. And, you know, their parking is really important to them. This is where they live. And what Lou's saying will happen, will happen. And our, our employees will, will flood to their streets and fill them up and our customers will flood to their streets. So, you know, I think th there's a lot of weight behind what she's saying and support from, from the businesses and the residents to listen to the residents on this piece. And uh, just want to throw that support behind the neighborhood on this one. Sure. Thank you no, so I much. Definitely, I definitely appreciate that feedback. That makes perfect sense to me. Lou, I'd definitely like to talk with you a little more about this, see who you're talking with at Dottie, um, just to get a sense of how I can possibly help with this. Great, because um, on our letter that forms the basis of the petition, it's really addressed to the mayor and, mm -hmm. Council, and Councilwoman Sawyer is of course on it as well, but this is an issue for Dottie and, uh, and there's some great people at Dottie and I've worked with, so I've been on Denver Moves and a number of these other committees and you're working with different groups. Um, and I serve on transportation solutions uh, with uh, Tychus and, you know, there are some really amazing, amazing people there, but they're not the people that are in the weeds and they're somehow, it, it seems like some of those communications are just crossed. So um, we really appreciate your help on that. And Richard, your support as always. And um, Councilwoman Sawyer has been on board with, with this. Um, Cherry Creek East um, had a big issue. Uh, Bill, you should <laughs> know that the issue you had that was told that it wouldn't be there is still in the proposal. So, um, I mean, it is one of the things that, oh, we didn't mean to say that. Well, somebody's got to be, you know, I know I'm a little over uh, OCD on details, but somebody's missing a lot of those. And it's really, uh, at this point, um, a problem. So we appreciate your help, all of you. I wasn't going to make too much of it because it's it's been it's a real neighborhood specific issue, but the neighborhood is is pretty upset about it, and we we appreciate everyone understanding that. Um, I know Country Club has restricted parking as well. I don't know they're not changing that right. So, um, and I walk through there all the time, uh, you know, walking through and then over to the club at times, and it is uh, it is not necessarily. That you don't see very many cars in there. Bob, did you want to weigh in? Well, I can't find my raise hand symbol. But, uh, I saw your hand, though. It's good. It works. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I, we we kind of have been left out of this whole parking thing. In terms of restricted parking, we don't have any. It's, it's simply hourly parking or three hours or two hours. But uh, we have no special residential permits. Uh, with the exception of University Street. And the, we're, the spillover in our neighborhood is not unlike what Cherry Creek North is is finding now. And we've tried, but because we're not statistically designated Cherry Creek, we can't be included in the Cherry Creek Parking District or anything that's done there. We have a very hard time 
especially uh, Councilman Sawyer, getting listened to about parking because they, they say we're not part of the district. So I don't know if perhaps with some of your help, we could get a better ear with the city, but we are concerned about the parking issues as well, especially with the upcoming development plan for the West End. Well, Bob, yeah. I will tell you that I think Lou's point here is that the city is not listening to us. There is no ear at the city. After two years, 18 months of conversation with them, they, you know, and multiple meetings and all the stuff, um, they came to us in a meeting and they said, thanks for everything. We're not doing what you, what you're asking for. And we won't compromise at all either. So um, I appreciate your request. I'm going to tell you right now to set your expectations. We can't get anyone at Dottie to listen to us or be respectful of the needs of the residents at all. So thank you for your feedback. And I will definitely, we will definitely keep that uh, as we continue this conversation, but I just want you to know um, that, you know, your expectation that we get an ear at Dottie that's going to listen to us is totally unfounded and unrealistic. Well, but, it's, and, it's, and I will it's, say, it's, Bob, if you have two and three hour throughout your district, and I mean, I'm over in country club neighborhood, like all the time with friends and walking through to go over to the club and it doesn't, there's so little parking over there. I mean, it's like the streets are really empty compared to what they are in when you're really adjacent to businesses. And well, when you get to the Eastern end, Lou, you're right up on Gilpin where you access the country club, it's not a big deal, but if you get to back to the Gilpin and Vine and Gaylord, those areas, it does get worse. And But it's, but it's still only that. two or three hours. So what they're talking about doing here, Bob, just so you know what I'm talking about, is they're going to be taking a good chunk of all the streets and they will be unrestricted. Like half of my block is unrestricted. So no limit on how long. And they are they are filled up by by 7 a.m. and they are full all day. I understand. I I'll, My office is in your district. I own two mm -hmm. houses there for which I have no parking on the city street. No restrictions, no help at all from the city. So, well, we will be and, continuing then, I, that. Without enforcement, none of it helps. So there's very little enforcement, no matter where you are. Yeah, if, Bob, that's actually a really good flag and something that Lou and I discussed um, with Dottie in our last meeting as well. And um, and Annette was there um, as well with us. And that's right. Um, none of this works without enforcement, of which we have zero in the Cherry Creek area. So that was also something we brought up during the meeting um, there are a lot of moving parts here and I feel like it's, uh, I, I, mean, I know you and Lou, um, need to connect offline about this a little bit, but yeah. thanks for finding that with us. I will say just to set your expectation. Um, I don't have any reason I can put my finger on for how unreasonable and unwilling to work with the community Dottie has been on this, but it's been extraordinary. And it is, um, the first time in my five years here that I've ever experienced that kind of dismissive total unwillingness to um, find any sort of bridge or compromise at all. So just setting your expectations there, but um, I think that's probably something you guys should connect off. Yeah, yeah. well, offline, I will, I will say that um, on Denver Moves with that team, I felt it was the opposite. We I agree. had such great participation and really good people providing real thoughtful feedback and when it's thoughtful and it makes sense, I mean, you have to have, you have to have the facts, right? You have to know what you're talking about and you have to have the data to support what you're saying. And when you do, they listened and it was a really terrific experience. So, you know, you have, Dottie's a big, a, a big multi-headed monster. And, um, and there are parts of Dottie that have been absolutely fabulous. So I don't want to just with one brush say, oh, they're terrible. They're not. It's just we have this issue with this issue in our neighborhood. And I'm happy to talk to you about it, Bob, at some point as well. So um, are there other questions about, I, I mean, I wanted to end this meeting on this high note, which is, you know, we have some great opportunities here. We uh, We expressed last night how lucky we are to have this relationship with the bid and what an amazing job they're doing, how really um, 
that the Cherry Creek West project and the presentation, how much they've listened and how much they're they're uh, they're willing to participate with us is so welcome. And you know, we have a lot of really great things happening. Do we have to live through a lot of construction? Yeah, we will. Can we get our handle on the parking with with Richard's help and and um, you know better enforcement and some of the things we're talking about? Yes, but people will stay here and invest and be excited about Cherry Creek. And we you know, we've got this big rollout where we're all about. And I'd love the whole steering committee to take up uh, this banner, but support our businesses if you can find it down in the bid. Don't order it on Amazon. Walk down to the store and pick it up. We need to support our small businesses and our big businesses. And brick and mortar needs us and we need to be for the, there for them so that we can continue um, to really be this, this unified um, neighborhood. And so I'd like us to think positively about some of the changes that are coming because they give us an opportunity to think about some of these things. Meredith? Thanks, Lou. Um, Sterling, thank you again for being here. I spoke with you about this last night. Um, I'm always thrilled that Amy Carr is here about Cherry Creek West. And um, because it's come up with a couple of people here at the meeting. And as I mentioned to you, Sterling, I I'm concerned. And I spoke to agencies last night. Paul Cashman had the District Six. Can I, uh, Meredith, can event. I stop you? Can I stop you for just a minute? The the Cherry Creek Rust rezoning has been filed, so I can't be a part okay. of the conversation. Um, I just have two quick things left to say, and then if if that's okay with you, I will just. I don't know why there are balloons coming up on my screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're on a Mac. Me, like, <laughs> I, I don't want to interrupt you. I know this is an important conversation. I just can't be a part of it for legal reasons. So can I just make two quick announcements and then I will, Owen and I will head out and then you guys can continue to have a conversation about Cherry Creek West. Is that okay? Sure. Thank you. Um, so two quick announcements. Number one, um, there is going to be uh, an Ellsworth storm drain project. Cherry Creek East um, knows about this already. The pre-work has been happening. Um, that is scheduled to start later this year. So just flagging that for everyone here. It's a, this kind of phase two of the project that went um, across from Spear across university um, and down first um, last over the last couple of years. Um, so just want to let everyone know that that is starting. Also, Parks and Rec has identified kind of that greenway along um, the cherry, the creek itself, not kind of up to the mall, but not uh, at the mall property, that they're going to do some transitional grasses there so that we stop having that Kentucky bluegrass um, taking up so much water in that area. Um, so just wanted to flag that for everyone here to let you know that it's a conversation that's happening um, and that work is is coming. It's imminent. Um, the timeline is not set yet, but want you to know about it as well. So I just wanted to flag those two projects. They're going to be happening within the Cherry Creek statistical neighborhood um, that will kind of affect traffic and those kinds of things. Um, they're both great projects. We're really looking forward to having those um, you know, in the, in the community, but wanted to just let you all know about them while I have you, um, and you'll hear more about them as they come. Um, but with that, I want to get back to Meredith and Cherry Creek West. Um, well, so I'm going to sign off. No, Thank you uh, all. Let me, let me just yeah. explain one thing to you, um, Councilwoman Sawyer. My comments to Sterling were not about the project of Cherry Creek West, but um, it's more, more a matter of trying to get some participation from some of the other agencies. Thrilled to hear about Parks and Rec doing some work um, at um, um, on the east side of, of that um, of the shopping area. Um, but um, as as we've mentioned, it would be like really helpful to have Dodie and um, Rec uh, Parks and I, I don't know if there's any way to get um, the Greenway Foundation. Um, and some of the other entities that are impacted by the development, not, not the specific development, but the surrounding areas um, at this meeting. Um, and, you know, like, especially Dodie, because university 
um, certainly has an impact for many of us and, and some of the other streets. So that was just my other comment, not about the actual filing, but thank you for telling us that, that the filing has been made. Did I steal your thunder, Amy? No, I announced no, that at I the think beginning of the meeting. No, I think Lou mentioned it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad, woo, saved. Um, okay, <laughs> well, I know if, if people have questions um, about Cherry Creek West, Amy has been awesome about being here to answer them. I just can't be here for this conversation. So I'm gonna sign off at this point. Thank you all so much. Please reach out to our office if there's anything we can do. Um, and everyone, we'll see you next month. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. And thank you for the presentation, Owen. Yeah, good um, to see you guys. I, yeah. Bye. Uh, we're actually not going to talk about Cherry Creek West. I think I gave everybody the big update, which is that they have filed. Amy is now a full-on part of our steering committee. And and as I joked to her last night, this project will probably um, be her legacy and it will uh, she'll be involved with it the rest of her life. So um and we're happy about that she's a terrific member of this committee and and um valuable insight with her experience so um but with that i would like to bring us back and we are going to end a little at 606 we're going to end a little bit early um unless anybody has anything else i'd like to take us back to that happy place of thinking about what could be and we are going to start um reaching out to the gardens and uh richard next month we look forward to your presentation on uh, the parking district information and just to remind everybody now we can watch some of these things happen as as the bid takes over we can look at the some of those park um, parkways that will be improved and um, I mean this is a gorgeous time of year let's get out and enjoy it walk through the bid um, they are doing great job on their landscaping so um, let's just feel really lucky to live here. Sometimes all we talk about are problems, but uh, it's, a, it's, it's such a beautiful, wonderful place. And with all of your input, we can keep it that way. Um, so with that, I am going to, unless anybody cares to bring up another topic, I'll bring this meeting to a, adjournment. Is that good for all? Okay. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we will we will upload this as usual, and we'll see you next month. Thank you all so much. Bye, bye, everybody. Thank you.